glorious promise of the kingdom of heaven in John's preaching. What a jumble of feelings they must have experienced. Feeling uncertainty, but clinging to faith, they stepped up for their baptism of repentance. They promised to turn their lives back to God because the Holy Spirit among them drew them forward together in a compelling way while they were still in the dark about how God's plan for salvation was going to unfold. As I studied this week, I thought about the coming months, the interim period between installed pastors. It occurred to me that we could compare these days to Jesus' time in the wilderness after his bat baptism. Do you remember how he was immediately driven to the desert? He prayed, he fasted, he was tempted by the devil. So uncertain days ahead invite you to draw close to God by prayer and reflection to discern what God will next require of this congregation. This period of time, I've been through it several times in a former congregation before I was a pastor, this period of time will test your commitment to answering God's call. Well, it will test your determination to remain faithful. It will test your perseverance to discern as a family of faith together what God is calling this congregation to do. The tie that binds you together as God's family is Jesus Christ. The world can be a troubled, violent, brutal place in which to minister. I think we've all seen that this week. That is not new. Jesus has always taught the people of faith to turn from despair and claim hope. We who are baptized hear the call from God upon our lives to follow Christ. We see we can't ignore the needs of the world around us. In these uncertain times, God calls us to do several things. To share the hope to shine Christ's light to the nations for the sake of the kingdom of heaven here and now, and to share God's words from heaven affirming Christ as Savior. God calls us to be the disciples God needs us to be now for the challenges in the world today. The words of our earlier hymn send us all out now. Remember, arise, your light has come. The mountains burst in song, rise up like eagles on the wing. God's power will make us strong. In a few minutes, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Begin this new season of exploration of what God requires by thinking about the call to life in Christ you received when you were baptized. Think about what God requires you in this stage of your Christian journey, what God requires of you. Think about what God is calling this congregation to do and be as disciples of Christ in these difficult days. What will you do to fulfill all righteousness? Now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us now respond to what we have heard and share our belief by using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 34 in your hymnal. Please stand. Let us confess the faith of the Universal Church. We believe in one God, the Father,
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see the full that I command. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one and only Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. with your mercy and meet their needs 
according to your great wisdom and loving mercy. By your spirit, give us power to show your love and to live holy and joyful lives. <clears throat> Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> On the night of his arrest, Jesus was in an upper room with the disciples. He took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the saving death of Jesus Christ until he comes. These are the gifts of the God, gifts of God for the people of God.
Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom. And our love be your love, teaching others how to live in this world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite Mike Claxton to come forward to give his report. I don't think I need a mic. <laughs> I'm told that's how I got my name. <laughs> a little loud. So, a little history, the personnel committee, I just finished planning and executing Barry Almond's retirement when we were thrust into Reverend Palsy's retirement. And then a charge from the session to take on the task of being a search committee for an interim, as well as doing annual performance reviews for the staff. So we interviewed all the applicants. And we rank them according to a criteria that we had set, set up that really reflected what we thought Shalom Presbyterian Church was all about. After thoroughly discussing each candidate, we arrived at what we think is a God-inspired conclusion. And I say God-inspired because we all felt that God was definitely at work in our search. Session has approved the Personnel Committee's recommendation to hire Reverend La Laura Dio. It's spelled B-I-A-U, but pronounced Dio, until she says different. <laughs> For an initial term, uh, February the 16th, to December 31st, 2020. Now, don't expect that we will have a call pastor on January 1st, 2021. Presbytery requires all contracts, which are what interims are rather than a call pastor, that all contracts be terminated or they go through the end of the year and then you start again. So, we expect to have a follow-on contract for a period of time. Uh, Reverend Vio is a trained interim pastor and is currently serving in her second interim position in Titusville, Florida. We thank all of you who prayed for the committee's work. And we feel it's really amazing how God has worked over two states think it's, he didn't have a problem with state lines. <laughs> We're thankful for Reverend Mio's dedication to filling our transitional needs, and we look forward to beginning our work with her. So no doubt, she will be embraced with the love that this church is known for. So when she comes, don't be shy. Show her what a warm coastal North Carolina welcome feels like. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or any member of the committee uh, after the worship anytime. Just give us a call. Thank you, Mike. Our closing hymn is number 318. In Christ, there it is, and there'll be still next. <laughs>
come. The Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Go out into the world in the love and peace of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit remain with you this day and forever.